All right, so at the segment level, you'll see a lot of these operations will start to repeat. And there's then very specific things that you want to do at each sub-object level. Um, I still haven't used this. I have to learn that one. Um, I'll turn on my vertex numbers so I can see them. Create line, break, those still operate the same way, attach, cross-section. Um, refine, I think, still operates the same way even though we're at the segment level. Um, insert operates the same way. Most of these procedures operate the same way. The main difference, or the, the main reason you'd go to segment is to, and command stay active, so I hit Q to get rid of it. I can select a segment. Let me shrink my gizmo so you can see it. And it's right here is divide. So if I add a few more and I divide it, it's a <coughs> quick way to put in a specific number of segments. So something to be careful with with those It could be because they're straight. So let me make sure it works for sure. If I do this, and then I divide it, you can see they start to get a little tighter around the bend. You can't, like, they're not evenly spaced like they are with a straight segment. Let me see if I can add more of them. Another thing to turn on often are these axis constraints. So that's why I can only move it in the Y right now, even though I'm going that way. Let me increase my interpolation. Oh, uh, for all the command bars, you just right click on any menu and these come up. I usually just dock them down here or something. Or actually, I put them here. Um, so let's get this. So you can see how they're tighter here, less tight here. It has to do with the tightness of the Bezier curve. So let me pull this one in really tight. So they're not evenly spaced. Just something to be wary of when you are dividing a curved line, where any straight segment, when you divide it, you'll get equal spacing. And that's, and you might want to detach segments also to make separate splines. So that I'll start to do that. And that's become a separate editable spline now. And you can also select them and copy them reorient them and you can give them my material IDs if they become a surface so then next is spline which is a series of welded vertices if I break one of these this now becomes two splines in an editable spline. So there's a few procedures you can do with uh, with the spline object. Again, you can cross-section, attach, create lines. Um, you can uh, you can mirror them. I'll get into these in a second. But the and I don't really even use this anymore. But so you guys see it's here. You can outline, which is like an offset. You can go to the inside or the outside, or you can make it based off the center.
to show you some of the other spline tools because I mean I'm not going to sit here and tell you that Max is the best drafting program ever because it's definitely not but uh, you can do quite a few things with the spline work and we'll be building a lot of our geometry with splines so at the spline level is where you can start to do more of your traditional drafting type operations like trim, extend, and things like that. So trim, you can trim these segments, which if you did the Barcelona Pavilion tutorial, you know this. But I don't think they show these, the Boolean operations. So with um, Boolean, I can do, if I want to do a union or a difference you can cut things out so let me go over the procedures on how I did that again because it's tricky you select your object you click boolean and then select the one you want to do and that's how you run these operations and then you also have uh, difference which is the difference between two objects and you have union which is a union of two objects. So pretty good operations. Like those are, I'd say those are pretty good for figuring out things and plan. They save you quite a bit of time. And then extend and trim work as well. And then mirroring, which at times I'll do in here, or at times I won't. If you mirror it, it'll just mirror the object. Mirror. And if you hit copy, it'll mirror and make a copy. You can tell to do it about the pivot point. And you can detach them like you can with segments. Again, I really try not to hide at the sub-object level. And you can re reorient. Oh, when you detach it, it'll reorient. Um, explode, break it up into a series of splines, and I think that's all the operations you can do at the spline level.